our big house is designed in sense to reflect the womb of a female. The dance floor is always dirt. So you're dancing on Mother Earth's chest. You have to be bare feet because you're dancing as graceful as you can. So you don't want to hurt or disrupt anything. The beating and unity of the singing at the log is the heartbeat. And the fire is that unity, that soul that lives within all of us. And when we're dancing, we turn. And we turn to the left when we enter and when we leave because it's that spiritual place that you go. So when you turn, it's like a baby turning, leaving the womb into the everyday world. So it's the same reflection. So it's a very healing, powerful place. It is a place of separating yourself from everything else. When I attend a Paulette and I get to sing and dance and just letting go and being one with that spiritual connection, I guess, for myself. Preparing for a potluck, there's a lot to be done. Uh, you know, there's there's painting, there's designing, you know, you know. But when you're in potlatch mode and when you've got a few hours before the potlatch starts, you don't have time to think. You pick up a mask that's already been cleaned up and you know, you gotta design it and paint it. You don't you don't you just do it. And it's not just here, upstairs, they're in the houses, they're finishing up blankets, they're preparing meals for tomorrow, you know, a thousand people there. It's like a puzzle. We're just one piece of the puzzle and it brings the family together, gives them strength. That energy is it's pretty hard to describe. Potlatch is you telling everybody what you're doing with all your wealth who you're dispersing it out to and your family dances and, and the people show up so they can give testament to that, you know? And they're your proof that you did this. And if there's any questions about who has what and anyone wants to argue around, everybody knows who you gave all your stuff to. Bo does what any respectable carver would do with his money. He filters it up through his people, potlatching, helping everybody out. He does the right thing. Bo's a really good man. Right now we're standing around in Alert Bay. Not a bad day in January for Alert Bay, really. Uh, watching what Bo does is just amazing. I mean, uh, the first potlatch I saw with him here, he must have carved 30 or 40 masks to burn in the fire. And the pictures and the imagery was just incredible. There was a dance that went with all the masks. They were all danced first. And uh, what it represented was a connection to his culture in the past. It shows what what was. That a native culture could support art shows that they had to be wealthy because you can't support artists to sit around and carve things unless you've got enough food. So in the beginning, that these cultures could support native art and native artists, the Haida Nation, this nation, most of the nations along the coast showed that they were had enough to eat, had, you know, they were wealthy nations. And uh, through that, the artwork grew. And that they managed to retain it is an amazing thing because everything was done to destroy that that could be done. The uh, building behind me is called St. Michael's Indian Residential School Building. It was constructed in 1929 and it's one of about 130 residential schools that were built across the country from the late 1800s to the 1990s. And uh, the intent of these schools uh, was to assimilate little Aboriginal children from their own cultures and into the mainstream society. Uh, even when you look at the record, the archival record, the intention was to educate every little Indian child 
so that there was no more Indian left in them by the time they left these institutions. So it was total assimilation. That was the objective of these schools. And so they destroyed languages and cultures, all kinds of things. Bo's mother went to the school and like everyone else, she suffered the indignities, the physical abuse, and far too much sexual abuse in these, in these institutions. Most of us left these institutions broken. My, my time has come and gone, I'm, I'm 75 years old now, but I'm hoping that we can inspire those behind us to change their view about themselves, to recapture some of their ancient traditional worldview so that we can live empowered lives. And so we're going to celebrate the survivors, all of the former students who are still alive, are going to descend on this place on February 18th to mark the passing of a dark era in our lives, in our history, collective history as Canadians. And as we move through this healing journey, we move to the potential for reconciliation. And part of the question about our culture and our carvers is that Bo and them will help to carry all of this forward that allows us as Kwakwakiwak in this culture here to be able to continue to practice our ceremonies, rebuild our lives, reclaim our history, reclaim our languages, and be free at last.